When it's time to spray your field, one of the most important things you can do is calibrate your sprayer. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the 1 128th method of calibrating a sprayer. It sounds complicated, but believe me, it's really easy. The reason for calibrating your sprayer is really straightforward. If you want to ensure you get enough product like herbicide or fertilizer on your garden or on your pasture, you need to make sure your sprayer is outputting in the amount and the volume that you need to output according to the directions of whatever chemical you're trying to spray. To start calibrating, you're just going to need a few simple tools, including a long tape measure or a measuring wheel, a couple of flags because we're going to measure a straight line distance at some distance, and whether we're going to drive the tractor, so you got to have a way to mark your starting point and your end point. You're going to need a standard tape measure to measure the distance between the spray nozzles. The next thing you'll need is a calculator, a way to take notes, and a stopwatch now I don't bring all three of those I use my phone to do all three of those things to take notes a stopwatch and a calculator and then the last thing you're gonna need is a graduated measuring cup that measures in ounces because we're gonna have to catch the output of this sprayer to help calibrate to see how much we're gonna spray when we go a given speed the first step we need to do is measure the distance between the nozzles and the reason why we do that is once we get that measurement we refer to our chart and that tells you how far you need to drive the tractor to be able to do the next step of calibration. The next step is we got to refer to the spray chart. Now these spray charts, you can download them from all kinds of extension sites. I got this one from the Noble Foundation in Oklahoma. And what you do is once you get the measurement between the nozzles, you compare the distance between the nozzles to what it says on the chart. And that'll tell you how far you need to drive to be able to time your distance and how far it takes you to travel. Once you've got your ground distance measured, the next thing to do is just drive your tractor. What I do is just put my tractor in the speed I'm going to spray at to see how long it takes me to get from the start point to the end point. And I just use the stopwatch on my phone to measure that time from the starting point to the end point. So the next step is we got to go back to the sprayer. Once I've determined how long it takes me to go from point A to point B on the route that we marked, and usually I'll run that two or three times or more and get an average of that speed. But once I know the average of that speed, I've got to make note of that time. And in this case, 27 seconds, I got to make note of that time because now it's time to go back to the sprayer. When my pressure on the nozzle set at the manufacturer's recommendation, I'm going to get the tractor up to speed just like I was spraying and then for 27 seconds and remember that 27 seconds is important because that's how long it took me to travel from point A to point B. Now of course your times are going to be different but on my tractor at the ground speed I'll be using it took 27 seconds to travel from point A to point B earlier and so with my measuring cup I'm going to put that underneath one of the spray nozzles and hold it there for 27 seconds the same length of time it took me to travel. When I'm done I'll take the measuring cup out and I'll make note of how much it says it measured. In this case, I caught eight ounces of water during that time, but it doesn't just stop at one nozzle. Instead of just measuring one nozzle, I need to measure the output on all three of my nozzles on this sprayer, or how many nozzles you have on your sprayer. Once you measure the output, you average between all of them. If one of the nozzles varies by more than 10% on the output, you need to replace that nozzle, but for these are all right on the money. And so what I'll do is I've got an average of eight gallons per acre that I'll put out I'll mix my chemical accordingly, and then I'm going to go out and spray this evening. And with the 1 128th method, all you have to do is mark the distance based on the chart, which is based on your nozzle spacing, travel that distance, figure out how much time it takes you to travel that distance, and then capture the liquid coming out of the nozzles for that length of time, and then that'll tell you how many gallons per acre you're putting on there.